Our world is at war. The very people who claim to protect it leave a trail of death and desolation in their wake. Right, we're here talking about Warface with Peter, who's a little bit giggly after a, a good Gamescom. Uh, I'm happy to be here, yeah. He's sort, he's, he's, sort, he's sort of happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. It's good. It's, it's good. It's been good so far. Like, I mean, the, the response that we got so far is super positive. Mm. So for developers, obviously, this is, yeah, you get out of the three days site. It's cool. It's good. Actually, just on a slight thing, I want to talk about this artwork for a second. This is, this is a very nice composition. You guys have obviously put a nice sort of marketing spin on this. It, it seems a very thoughtful pose. Is this a representation of what Warface is? <laughs> Uh, actually, it's a bit, it's a bit of self-irony there. I mean, you, you recognize the Hamlet pose, yeah. so um, it's not like this super existential questions. Actually, I mean, Warface is a very fun, like jump in, have fun, um, shoot people kind of game. Um, you'll see that when you play it later. It's super accessible, like instant fun basically. And and I mean, the question that's behind it is basically to be or not to be is kind of the ultimate shorter shooter question in a way. So yeah, there is self-irony attached to it, but also we like the claim that is attached to it. Now, we were talking just before the interview, saying about you, it's a free-to-play game, but you don't like that term, you don't like the free-to-play. It's a Crytek game that's free. Exactly. Um, slight difference, but for us it's very important, because I mean, free-to-play has this kind of stigma attached to it, like mediocre quality and pay-to-win, so... And those are things that we definitely, as Crytek, want to stay away from. And with this, it's a Crytek game for free, and with this attitude, there's um, a whole thing attached to it from a development point of view that we are really excited about and that we think is, in the end, going to be good for the developers and the players at the same time. Talking about graphics, obviously enough, you're making this accessible to all, um, but scalable. Mm -hmm. But that obviously means it's a little bit different from what you guys are renowned for with, with fantastic visual games. But does that make it a lot easier then? Do you guys not have to spend as much time hammering away? Nah, not really actually. I mean, the whole thing is CryEngine based, so it's based on our latest technology. And actually scaling things down is a lot easier than scaling things up. And, and since we're actually able to scale up, I mean, we have to support this as a global brand and there's like different minimum target base um, in different territories. But being CryEngine actually scales up really well. So. No, I wouldn't think so. Like, I mean, the, the team that's there is like 100 people, so it's a full-fledged team. And the content production that we have there right now um, didn't feel, feel a lot easier than our other games, I have to say. Yeah. Well, what's the sort of structure? I mean, where, where are you guys at the moment in terms of development? What's the roadmap between now and release? Um, so the game is live in Russia already. Um, and I, don't, I can't tell you any numbers, obviously, but very successful. Like, the feedback that we got so far is super positive. And we are now starting to roll out into different territories. And for Western territories, meaning Europe and North America at the first place, it's hopefully going to be this year. So. And you're talk about wh wh why Russia for testing this? Um, I mean, the, the main development studio is based in Kiev. So there's a strong connection to the market. They know the market, they know the people, they know how they play. And they, they like Crytek there, like it's, um, our, our company has a very positive reputation and also like location-wise it's kind of based between East and West, so it's a mix of play styles. And so for us it felt like a good test market to roll the game. All this is new and exciting for us, it's a new adventure, being PC, digital distribution only. Um, so we wanted to get it right when we go into the Western markets. Yeah. Are, you, are you guys almost using this as a template to sort of see, right, this is the model we're going into with the free-to-play and everything like that, and potentially using that almost as a template for the future for the company? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether you saw the interviews that our CEO gave, but definitely um, free-to-play online, or Crytek Games for free online. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, no. um, It's going to be an important part of the strategy for the company, definitely, yeah. If we go 100%, we have to see. We have to see what the console developers do, what the console manufacturers will do. We have to see how the market will develop in general, but definitely it's going to be a, an important pillar of our strategy. Yeah. Do you feel it's, it's almost like harder getting that attachment rate of consumers, of players, because there's such a variety of stuff out there within that same sort of free to play market? It's almost you have to have a stronger attraction, a stronger pool to get players on board? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, with the box product, once you buy it, you're kind of committed to it, in a way. Um, so, with being online and being free, um, people have the possibility to actually jump to a different game every time, basically. They, l they log in. So, you really have to get it right to actually attach the player to the game. And the best way to do it is, is just make an awesome game, I would say. So, I mean, f again, as we talked about before, for us, this is for the players a really cool thing because um, they can try the game. If they don't like it, they leave. So it puts a lot of pressure on the developer to actually get this right because um, if they produce a mediocre game, yeah, players will leave. So you know, we think if we get it right, then players will stay loyal to us. They will actually invest in the game. They will invest time in the game, which is like the most valuable resource in, in general. And once they do that and they like the game, we think that they will also spend money in it. So. And you guys have a, a carefully constructed plan for rollout of content and stuff like that after launch? Super carefully constructed, yeah. Super carefully and super secret, it seems. Yeah, super secret. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't talk about the rollout plan for the West yet, but it's going to be um, fresh content um, every day, more or less. So the, the thing is, like, we, we have the five-player co-op mode, and in the five-player co-op mode we have um, new missions every day. So every day you log in, you get a new mission, and then the mission rotates through. Um, so that's the, the bottom line day-to-day -day fresh content that we have, and obviously we'll expand um, on the game mode, on the setting side, um, as long as the game is out there, which for us could be more or less endless, hopefully. Well, I think that's all the time we have for There's people eager to get in and play it. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk. Thank you.